Hi again, and this is the, a look at the redox process, and this is the first program in a series of five. Let's begin where we left off with the standard level program. Many of you can be familiar with the concept of a, a half cell. <clears throat> and for instance, in this particular half cell, let's imagine for a moment we have a, a solution down below. Let's say it contains some lead ions in it. And here we have our electrode essentially made out of the metal lead. Now a few features about this table that we use called the standard electrode potential. First of all, this experiment must be conducted at 25 Celsius or 298 Kelvin. The solution has to be one mole per liter. Now, a few of these you'll notice don't involve necessarily solutions. For instance, if we take a look at this one here, we have gases present. How can we conduct the experiment if we have a gas present? For that, we turn to a little bit different design of our electrode. In this case, we take our gas, if say it's hydrogen gas, and we would use a pressure of one atmosphere. So around 100 kPa if we're using gases. That gas would then be bubbled down into a solution that contains hydrogen ions at one mole per liter. Our choice of electrode is platinum. So when we tend to have gases present, we use platinum. Platinum for a few reasons. First of all, platinum tends to be inert and won't react. And platinum can actually act as a catalyst in many of these reactions. So whenever you have a gas present, gases require a platinum electrode. Now one single cell by itself is not capable of generating an electrical current. We need to put two together. And that's going to lead me to my next concept, the standard hydrogen electrode. I'm going to take a section of the table and use it a little bit more. <clears throat> Let's say over here we design our hydrogen gas. So this will be hydrogen gas. Down below in here, we'll put our hydrogen ions at one mole per liter, our platinum electrode. And on the other side, let's use lead. And it'll be present in a lead solution. Now, use of this table gives me two values that I want to draw some attention to. This measures the potential of this reaction happening. This is what we call the reduction potential. I can see here that hydrogen has a higher reduction potential than lead. That would tell me that this reaction will go forward and this reaction will need to reverse itself as I can't have two substances both gaining electrons. So the processes that would take place then is that the hydrogen would be gaining the electron and turning here into hydrogen gas. So if I hook this device up to say some sort of voltmeter, this is the direction then of my electron flow. The substance with the higher potential will gain the electrons. Hence, this side will be reduction and act as the cathode. And over here at this side, this side will act as the anode. And the reaction that I'll have here will be the metal lead losing electrons and forming lead ions. Again, it's driven here by the reaction that has the higher potential. In this case, the higher potential lies with the hydrogen side, hence it will gain electrons. Now, we can express this in an overall reaction, and we might recall that when we write an overall reaction, we 
tend to put the anode first in the cell diagram, our salt bridge, and then what's happening at the cathode. So in this case, the anode would be the metal lead, and then my phase boundary with the lead ions, my salt bridge. Now to describe what's happening here, again, I'll list the ions that are present. And in this case, a gas is present, my phase boundary, and electrode. So this is typically how we define an electrode when we have gases present. Now, let's change things a little bit and take a look now at what happens if we put hydrogen in with copper. So a little change down here, copper metal, copper ions, again my platinum with my hydrogen gas and my hydrogen ions. Comparing these two, I can see, the, uh, sorry this copper we'll use down here, in this case I can see that copper has the higher reduction potential than my, uh, than my hydrogen does. So as a result this reaction will go forward, and this will need to reverse. So over here at the copper side, the copper 2 plus ions will gain two electrons and turn into copper metal. So I'll see this side slowly growing in size as copper becomes deposited on its surface. We'll complete the circuit by introducing the voltmeter and my direction of electron flow is towards the side with the higher potential. So electrons will flow this way, and hence the reaction over here will be the hydrogen gas forming hydrogen ions and liberating the electron. Now, to determine the potential of this, let's write out the two half reactions for a moment. I have copper 2 plus and two electrons forming copper. The electric potential or the reduction potential for this is 0.34 volts. The other side, the hydrogen, is turning into the hydrogen ion and an electron, and the potential that for that is 0.34. Zero, 00 volts. Now I'm going to need to double this reaction so that I can ensure the number of electrons lost and gained are equal to each other, giving me an overall reaction then of copper 2 plus the hydrogen gas producing two hydrogen ions and the metal copper. And the voltmeter in this case would read 0.34 volts, essentially the sum of my two potentials that I have here. Writing this out then in the form of the cell diagram, the anode followed by the cathode. The anode reaction in this case is occurring at the platinum side because this is where oxidation occurs, this is where reduction occurs, and reduction always occurs at the cathode. So I have platinum, my phase boundary, hydrogen gas, hydrogen ions, the salt bridge, and then over to the copper. So. The table is designed based on hydrogen providing the reference from which all other values are determined. So all of these potentials are essentially in comparison with the potential, uh, with the reduction potential of hydrogen set as zero. You also make sure that you recall what the standard conditions are by remembering that you need one mole per liter solutions, 100 kilopascals for the gas, and the use of platinum electrodes whenever dealing with um, solutions or substances that involve gas reactions. 
We'll take a look, a closer look at using these values in our next program. Thanks for watching.